Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth this morning. Now, this is a new week, and I know we're getting to the end of the month of August. Now, August is going to end tomorrow, <laughs> praise God. And, and I, let me use this opportunity also to invite you to our 24 hours fasting and prayer meeting, holding on the 1st of September, that's on Wednesday. But the meeting is going to start by 12 midnight on Tuesday. Now, it's ending 12 midnight into Wednesday, uh, Tuesday into Wednesday morning. Praise God. And then we're going to be praying at every watch. The information is on your screen. To join us is a Zoom meeting. I don't want you to miss this coming watch and uh, prayer meeting. I don't want you to miss it for anything. Plan for it, set an alarm, and join us using the link, and let us make power available for the month of September. God has been honoring us. He's been honoring His Word. We've been having testimonies. And, and this thing, September is going to be greater. Praise God. All right, are we ready to call forth our daily bread? Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, today I demand and I receive my daily bread in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. And it's coming. Hear me. Check your life. If you've been declaring these words, you realize that things have started changing in your life. There is no way you will engage your heart in God's word and God's truth that you will not see a response from heaven. And when you see, when you begin to see a change, celebrate it. I'm telling you, make a big deal out of it. I'm telling you the truth. That's how you put the devil to shame. That's how you declare your freedom from the power of the enemy. You celebrate it. You declare it. Say it everywhere. Praise God. And, and you will see God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today's broadcast. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you have been doing in our lives and through this broadcast. Today I declare the name of the Lord Jesus concerning everyone watching. Burdens have been lifted. Yokes have been destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter number 1. The first book of Genesis. I'm going to be sharing with you this week on the power of the renewed mind. The power of the renewed mind mind now we've been i've been talking to you lately about how god works in us see and and the product of his working in our lives so it's still continuation of that series but we're focusing right now on the power of the renewed mind so genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 god said in 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 in, in this genesis and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon earth. Did you see that? Now, this was God's intention. God said, let us make man. And I've told you this many times. If you follow, if you're one of those who follow me closely, you would have heard me say this, that Genesis chapter 1, the creation in Genesis chapter 1 is not the same as you find in Genesis chapter 2. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, God was the one creating. And how was he creating? He was creating by speaking. In Genesis chapter 1, God spoke out all his intentions. He spoke out everything he wanted to do. He spoke it into being. But hey, guess what? The whole of Genesis chapter 1, like for example, 
when God said, let us make man in our image, nothing happened. Nothing happened. So you, you say, like, just like we say, God created the whole earth in six days. But you see, not these physical things you see. The physical things you see didn't become physical in six days. No. How did God create? He created by speaking words. Now there's a reason I'm telling you this. He created by speaking words. But in those words are hidden the perfection of his plan and his will. So we find here God says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them did you see that and let them have dominion so in in saying this he is speaking in plural terms so he wasn't just talking about one person that he wants to create he he says i want to make man so more like you know some translations say mankind let us make mankind in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over what the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth so this was god's intention this was what god spoke into being now then we know adam and eve became a product of this word many many years after God spoke this word. So it's not the day he spoke this word that they became, you know, and then and he, he went to the ground, made the dust of the ground. No, listen to me. Before Adam and Eve were created, the Garden of Eden was prepared first. And it took, the, it took years for the Garden of Eden to be the way it was supposed to be in a habitable form so that man can dwell in it. Do you get what I'm saying? So he, God didn't just say, let us make man, and then he made man. No, these things took, let me show you something, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4. He says, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now he says, generation. These are the generation now. If you lead me, if you follow me, I will tell you this. And this is the truth. This Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4 is where actually human or, or that's where the Bible as we have life today started. Now, in, in Genesis chapter 1, all this was happening with God. And, and no one was there. No, nothing was created. Nothing you don't understand what I mean. Nothing became um, came into existence until God rested. Nothing came into existence. And when God rested, then creation began. The physical manifestation of creation began. For example, God didn't just say, let the trees grow out and then trees just started springing out. No, the seeds were planted. It took the same process of time for every seed to germinate and grow. God set the patterns, everything he needed to do. So that's why he said, these are the generations. See? So it took many years. Now all these things were happening, yet man was not in the picture. In other words, man was not created yet or, or formed yet. Now after God had prepared the Garden of Eden, like I said earlier, it took years. Not just one day, one week. It took years. And then God now formed man and put him in the Garden. Now the intention of God what God actually created when he spoke man into being. He says, man will be in his image and after his likeness. That's what God said. But then we know according to scriptures that Adam and Eve were not in the image and likeness of God. So did God tell a lie? No, he didn't. You see, the same way God will say, let us make, let a tree come out of the ground. And you won't see a tree springing out of the ground. Rather, a seed will be planted. That seed will germinate. It will take a while. The seed will germinate, grow into a shrub, grow up, I mean, grow into a plant and grow up, 
become matured, it will take years. And eventually, you will look and say, oh, the tree is here. Now, it's the same way God started with man. Not complete yet. Adam was not complete yet. He, he was to follow God until he becomes in the image and likeness of God. But you know the story. They didn't follow God to the end. They broke the journey by disobeying God. And the moment they disobeyed God, they were still flesh. At that time, they were not spirit beings. That's why I said they were not in the image and likeness of God. Because God is a spirit. Now, God himself testified in Genesis chapter 6 that man is flesh. If God is a spirit and the same God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And now the same God, having made man, having formed man from the dust of the ground, comes again and says, hey, my spirit will not always strive with man because man is flesh. That's to tell you something. Did he change his mind along the way? No, sir, he didn't. Jesus came later and let us know by saying in John chapter 3, it says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Meaning there is that which is born of the flesh. And then there is that which is born of the spirit. Now, are these two separate? No, Jesus showed up. And said, speaking to Nicodemus, he said, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. That's to tell you the concept of being born again was not necessarily as a result of sin. But the truth is, God had ordained from the beginning that man after creation, after he formed man, man will grow in obedience to him, but man will get to a day where he will now be born again. See, so being born again is not just because you were a sinner and then you say a sinner, yeah, you know, I used to do a lot of bad things. Ah, that's why I need to be born again. And someone else said, me, I grew up clean, you know. I never got association, even though I don't go to church, but I was always a good boy. And I was raised up properly and I never did any bad thing. I never lied. I never did. He says, so I don't understand this whole thing about you guys saying you need to be born again. No, the reason you need to be born again is because you were first born flesh. And because you were born flesh... You need to be born again. Now, this time you've got to be born of the spirit. It takes the man that is born of the flesh to be born of the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, that is how God ordained it from the beginning. So to the day you got born again was the day the Holy Spirit now incubated on your, over your body, incubated that seed which is his word, and then planted it into your being. So Peter tells us being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible by the word of God that lives and abides forever. That's why I always say this. To be born again is not just because when the preacher was preaching, I felt like crying. So when he made the altar call, I went to the altar call. Oh, when the preacher was preaching, I was so scared. I didn't want to go to hell. So when he made the altar call, I went out for no, sir. No, sir. To be born again means to respond to the implanting of the word of God by the Holy Spirit. It is not a man's thing. Nobody can get you born again. Only the Holy Spirit can get you born again. Because first of all, he's the one that overshadows you. Just like he did Mary and planted the seed of Jesus in her womb. So also he overshadows you and plants the seed of his word in your being. That day you became born of the Spirit. Are you following me? Now, having been born of the Spirit, the most important thing in your life, I'll say this and then we'll close, is you now need to align your mind to the new information that is going to now be given to you by the Spirit. 
The day you got born again, the Holy Ghost came to live inside of you. That is why the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old creature is a living soul. The new creature is a spirit being. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, this broadcast is not ending today. This series of teaching is not ending today. We are going to continue tomorrow. So I want you to stay tuned because you will be transformed. Praise God. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.